Recently on an episode of Real Ag Politics, Kelvin Heppner and I had a chance to chat with Alberta Wheat and Barley Commission's Tom Steve, as well as the Grain Farmers of Ontario's Deb Conlon. We asked both of them what they wanted to see in the next Canadian egg policy framework from their organization's perspective, and it was very interesting. Both brought up this issue of cross-compliance. This is bringing climate initiatives into egg stability programming. What are some of the consequences of that? Why do their organizations feel that this is a non-starter? And what do they feel needs to be done about it? The second part of it would be um, we have some major concerns about cross-compliance uh, potentially coming into the equation with business risk management programs. In other words, farmers would have to um, uh, demonstrate uh, that they are uh, uh, doing practices, best management practices that uh, reduce greenhouse gas emissions or um, contribute to carbon sequestration. In our opinion, uh, strong opinion, uh, business risk management programs need to be decoupled from uh, the climate change and greenhouse gas emission agenda of the federal government because uh, business risk management programs are just that. They're not climate emission reduction programs. Uh, they are designed to protect farmers uh, when they have a significant disruption in their production. So to connect the two of those, I think, is a major issue for us. The third one is uh, uh, what we're hearing in the agri-science program. So a part of the ag policy framework is um, uh, all of the shared cost programs in research that uh, crop commissions like ours participate in with the government of Canada, we're being told that, uh, you know, uh, at least 15% of uh, all programs must comply with the government's uh, greenhouse gas emission and uh, um, carbon emission reduction agenda to be able to qualify for funding. And um, I, in talking to most crop groups in Canada, that is not an achievable objective. And, um, and the final part of that is uh, we're, for example, all crop commissions are uh, negotiating what we call the uh, research clusters, um, which uh, would be in wheat, barley, canola, pulses, uh, you name it. And um, uh, we're being told that uh, matching funding from the federal government will be 70-30 if it complies with their greenhouse gas emission and climate change goals, and it will be 50-50 if it does not. So the 50-50 the that does not um, would logically apply to programs that might increase yields or productivity or increase our competitiveness. Uh, you know, it's possible that uh, some of the ones that fit into that other bucket would, but we're being told loudly and clearly by the government of Canada that um, a, a big part of the policy framework, um, the majority of it, for that matter, is uh, tied to their climate change and greenhouse gas emission reduction targets. Tom, what we've heard from some organizations is a real push here to expand the pie that you know, this program needs to receive more funding in the go forward. It's not kept up with inflation. It has been a, a flat number. Is that something that you've been talking to uh, people about? Yes, definitely we have been. Um, you know, it's a, that funding envelope has not expanded. And I don't think the last uh, couple of versions of uh, the egg policy framework and uh, further to that point, um, we would like to see more funding to um, potentially offset the impact of the climate change and greenhouse gas emission policies of the government of Canada. But um, I think that should be outside of the, uh, the business risk management program envelope. Um, the, you know, the government of Canada has made policy decisions that will could fundamentally impact our competitiveness in global markets. No question about that. Um, 
if you look at uh, fertilizer uh, emission reduction targets alone, and we don't have time to talk about that, but um, you know that's a big issue. Uh, the the potential of um, moving the pest management regulatory agency away from science based decisions to um, decisions based on um, some criteria that we're uh, we still don't quite understand. Um, but you know, on the one hand, the government of Canada is encouraging us to uh, uh, be um, a global leader in exports, and um, but it sort of feels like we're standing on the board. We're trying to lift in some cases uh, with uh, some of the policies that are being put in front of us. The um, the real question is, is uh, the federal government. Uh, the mandate letter of the current minister is very clear uh, that the focus is on uh, climate change. Uh, greenhouse gas emission reduction, sustainability. And those are all um, honorable pursuits. But at the same time, uh, we have to be competitive in the global market or we're not going to survive. And um, we have uh, a number of um, anchors that are being uh, potentially imposed on us to be competitive uh, globally. And uh, that's the concern. Um, there's a couple of other things coming up, you know, on um, business risk management, and that's around um, and the APF in general, uh, the cross compliance that's going to be required for um, or is being contemplated in this next um, policy framework to deliver on climate change and other sustainability objectives, which is really um, I don't know what the word is, but disappointing to see because it's a $3 billion program that hasn't had any increases for the last 10 years. Um, Tarper cut it on the agri stability and now they want to get, you know, more out of it. It's doesn't seem like the time, right? It's, uh, it doesn't, it hasn't even, doesn't even reflect inflation. And then, you know, if you see them looking at things like crop insurance and asking for environmental outcomes, I think you guys know this. If you were to mention that to a farmer anywhere across Canada, that would not, that dog doesn't hunt, right? Like nobody's going to like that. So is there a way to, if they increase the, the funding to it, would there be a way to integrate that criteria or is it a completely non-starter where they, it needs to be kept separate and these environmental incentive programs need to not be part of what we have as business risk management, Deb? Um, well, I think on the business risk management, you know, when you, if you talk to a farmer, they're saying like, if I lose money or if I lose yield, I don't want money to build a fence post, right? Like I need money to offset the losses that I have. And that's the way the business risk management program has always been set up. And if you really look at what's going on in the world right now, um, you know, the terrible tragedy that's happening in Ukraine, the, um, the everybody's saying there's going to be people going hungry and, you know, starting in June, we saw two um, riots already in Iran and uh, Sri Lanka, and then they're predicting that's going to happen, you know, just days from now, really, in June, is we're in June already. And so you've seen Europe step back and say, like, are we really on the right track with um, uh, farms to forks? Maybe we should set that aside and just focus on productivity, right? Um, the U.S. also expanding acres. Um, there's people in the EU not um, not being paid to to grow forage anymore because they need to grow food, and um, you know I don't see Canada making that same move, and I think they probably should be really getting on board on that uh, right away because Canada has a moral obligation to really deliver as much food as they can for. Um, for the world. So when you ask me that question about BRMs, I think when you're a farmer and you're going in and you um, subscribe to a BRM program, it's order to offset your risks that you're you're seeing, not to deliver on some other program. So I think it would be best if they, you know, separated out that objective and and funded it because um, inserting it into everything loses its its objective. 